I'm going to say welcome to you all. Uh, Jackie Fuller, good to see you and be in my house. Hey, guess what? This is episode 69, MCFB Live Thursday night, be on our 69th episode. We've been hanging out, you and me, in the studio in search of awesome. I continue to go out and look for people that are just crushing it. And tonight, fast track to high pay. Maddie, Miss L, Longbody, Longobardi, I beg your pardon. Uh, Urban Betty Salon, Austin, Texas. She is just crushing it, and I just want to earn the right for her before I bring her on. She is, uh, she's a millennial man, and uh, she's, she's doing it. I just want to make sure that uh, I, get, I, get my, uh, I get my PowerPoint squared away. Give me a second here. We'll do her right. There she is. She is so cool. I got the tat. Maddie, you're in the house. Urban, let me show you, Rudy, what uh, Maddie, why Maddie earned the right to, uh, to hang out. Look at these stats, Rudy. You're going to love this. Uh, she starts at Urban Betty in April of 2015 with zero clientele, as in she relocated from Chicago. And from April, Rudy and Shannon, uh, that she did $50,000 in a W-2. I mean, you, you, you know, you start, what is that, like a seven months? So, you, so 2016, she goes from 50000 on her, like, partial first year. I mean, technically, her first full year was 2016, $95,000. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a, not only a big boom boom, but a best yet. And if she continues to trend in the next six months, as she has the last six, Rudy, you're going to love this. She's going to hit 120,000. You summit coaches, I don't know about you, but I've never seen performance like that. Now, her, you know, her metrics, her other stats is she's got an average ticket of $117, which, I mean, she's a Bali Lama. Her haircut price is 63. She's rebooking about 75%. She's trending to do over 180 referrals. And uh, they're primarily from her repeat. So she's not necessarily like a social media ninja on steroids. She uses some traditional practices, and I'll let her tell you about this. Oh, my God, Mary Cole is in the house. She's up in her room, and she's watching. She was just at Detroit, and, yes, it was crazy awesome. We uh, we big boom, boom there, didn't we, Mary? So, uh, Don Leonard, good to see you. I, I know we, you and I go back, too. So, Rudy, yes, we're going to get Maddie. Let me see. What else do I want to say about her before I bring her up? Uh, when you look at some of her um, her other stats, um, what what you actually see is uh, on her social media. She uses an iPhone six plus. She's pro she's got about forty five guests a week, so she's crushing it. She's taken eight uh, pictures on the forty five. Takes about seven pictures per guest, so she's probably doing a little bit over fifty pics a week. She airdrops her pictures to her clients so that they have them inside of her photo album, and she's posting a couple of times. She's got about 40 of her uh, 600 or so guests on uh, her uh, 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 following her. So she's just beginning to get into social media probably three, four months ago, and she's really building. But you're going to see that she uses a different approach that I think you're going to find uh, find to be interesting. So anyway, I think what I'm going to do, rather than to uh, you know do anything more, is I'm going to call her. There she is! Give it up! Give it up for Miss Betty! <laughs> I was been bragging on you. You ready to go to work? Ready. All right. Only well, if your sound effects are ready. <laughs> say again. Only if the sound effects are ready. Oh yeah, they are. You're gonna be, gonna be making big boom boom. So I was telling uh, I was telling our viewers that um, you really have been doing some amazing stuff and that uh you know about your first year and last year and we'll get into the numbers but i wanted to get you going a little bit to give the viewers a little bit uh, of an understanding about who you are and what inspired you to uh do be a hairdresser go to hair school and get into the biz that you're in now since a young age i was very obsessed with my look my hair my makeup uh when i was five years old i cried for my own hairspray bottle my older sisters had their own hair products, and I was like, I need that. Um, and then actually, later in life, I have a sister who went to school. She didn't pursue this degree, but um, in high school, they offered a program, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try. So I did it, and it was 
All right. So one of the things, Maddie, that uh, you your first few years, you're you're in Chicago, and you're working for a couple of salons there, and you did relatively well. I think at the end of your fifth year in one of the salons, you know, you were way up into five figures, eighty five, ninety grand. What was different about working in those salons before you went to Texas and started working, you know, uh, at the Summit Salon that uh, you're you're uh, you're at now? The difference was is there was a structure on how to do my business. Before it was more like make more money, work more hours, is your practice. That and kind of have like how to make money. That is really what set apart. I think I'm a big boy person. The fact that it was kind of mapped out, it clicked and made perfect sense. Yeah, so you were having a little bit of technical dif difficulty. You're cutting in and out, so I want to paraphrase to the group what, what you said t to me, and that is when you were working in Chicago, that the, 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 there was a couple of salons that you spent a few years with, um, that, that they were like it was cool, but they weren't really about teaching you how to really grow your business, m work smarter, not harder, and you had to, I mean, you were doing, what, 50, 60 hours a week, and what you said to me is to make more, you got to, you know, work longer hours and raise your prices. And I think after that, the earth kind of dropped off for you. So uh, at the end of that time, you decide to go to Texas working at Summit Salon Urban Betty. And that's really where it started changing for you. Yes? Yes, 100%. So what was it different? I mean, like, what was the first thing that you noted different when you went to Urban Betty? Um, like the goals. I was like, no, but I can do these goals if I work hard. If I do it, the day, you know, self-retail, prove my clients. It's very easy. It was easy. It was, it was laid out for me. Like, this is what to do to make $100,000. And I said, I'm going to do that. Right, right. I know. I mean, that that's what was the you know the specifics for you were when you went to Urban Betty. First of all, you're sitting down with a coach. You got an you got an internal coach. You got another coach that's coming in, and they're really teaching you specifically how to plan your day. And you're getting much much more direction. So you get the support there. You have the charts. You've got the coaches. You got the motivation. And the bottom line is, they're teaching you how to make more money without killing yourself. Yes. You yes. told you told me something interesting yesterday on the phone call that I want to make sure that the group gets, and that is the single biggest difference is that you, how many hours a week are you working now compared to how many hours a week you had to work in Chicago to make money? So, yeah, Chicago, I was working three-plus hours. Here, I work 32 hours and sometimes less, you know? So it's a difference. Work less and make more. Yeah, and so I want to again make sure that the viewer gets this. You're working 32 hours a week at Urban Betty, where up north, I mean, you're probably working 40, 50 hours or more a week to make uh, less than you're making now. Now, the other thing you said yesterday, and I'm going to let you say it what you did in your first year at Urban Betty and money in W2, how many years did it take you? Uh, in another salon to get to that place? Uh, two or three years. Yeah, so you, you were able to jump time at, 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 right at, Ur at Urban Betty to get to a place that took you that long, uh, you know, four, three, four, five years or longer up north, yes? Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is now... You know, it, when you're in, people are going to want to know, so what is she doing different when she's in the game, when she's with her, her guests, her clients? On a daily basis, what would be some of the things you're doing that were different before that you would say, yeah, these things definitely have been responsible for empowering me to crush it? Yeah, so I'd say over my career, I've definitely developed a system, and now I'm able to perfect that system. So... Client experience is a big part of what I do. Um, I emphasize that I really care about my clients. I do. I appreciate them. I to my clients, it's very obvious. 
Yeah, you're you're like your 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 guest handling skills and your personalization. You're bringing an experience to the people you're serving that's extraordinary. I think that's what's really responsible for, you know, empowering you to crush it. And then it hasn't been that long since you started, like, bringing social media into your chairside manner where you started, you know, taking pictures and posting. How, how has that been uh, different for you? Um, I definitely think it gives me a little more of a creative edge and Urban Betty has done a great job at social media for us. So it definitely does help expose us to, you know, the college students here, kind of the art scene. So social media definitely impacts our salon as a whole. For myself, I really just started really incorporating it. And before I was like kind of shy about sharing my work, but the more I post it and people love it, I'm always surprised. So. Um, that's definitely something I, too, want to work on is my social media because it is really cool. People can just go right to my page, see my work, see, you know, my style. Like, okay, she's really into that, like, natural-looking hair. I think she's a stylist for me. So social media in our salon has done us wonders. So, and when you're taking pictures of your clients, what, what's been there, like, when you take a picture, how many of them are going, first of all, I want to see it. And uh, how, how can how, how can you get it to me? Um, so before my clients can even ask for their pictures, I offer just to airdrop it right to their, their phone. So if they have an iPhone, I can like directly send it to their photo library. So I don't even have to text it or email it. And I try to offer it before they ask because some people won't ask and they really want it. They're just shy to ask because they don't know, you know, but they love it. People love it. They love seeing their pictures. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had anyone tell me no, like you can't take my picture. And the fact that they know that I'm proud of my work makes them more excited about their hair. So you're you're now um, you. How do you get the picture to your client? You were saying something about AirDrop, which is really cool, and that sounds like it's working for you. Yeah. So um, if you just scroll up, like that little tab on your iPhone, it says AirDrop, and if you do everyone, I can just your phone comes up right on my iPad, and I can directly send it to your photo library. Awesome. Awesome. Now. Yeah. Um, you're in a place now, Maddie, that a lot of people want to get to, and they're working hard. I mean, you're giving them some of your best practices. Now that you're there and you see where people are, they're down the road and they want to they, they want to like get to where you're at, but they're they're not. They're at thirty thousand, forty thousand. What what could you say to them that might inspire and empower them to like hang in there and like just keep keep doing it? So what comes to mind first is passion. I think if you're passionate about your job and you love it, everything just eventually will kind of follow. Um, for the people who are struggling or how do I get to the next step, I really think hard work, you know, showing up to work every day, ready to go, hair done. You know, your hair is your first advertisement. That's what people see. You want to make sure your outfit's good, your, your station is set up. Um, I also think, you know, putting in a little extra time. If you have extra 20 minutes, maybe call that client who just did a big change and say, hey, are you loving your new hairdo? And that, that makes a world of difference. People like knowing that you care. Um, I also tell people, like, if you're struggling and you don't know how to get to the next level or do better, ask for help. Ask the people who you want to be. I love when girls come to me and they're like, how are you hitting your numbers? What's your system? How do you do it? How to make it easier? Or, you know, how did you handle that situation? Or what did you learn from that? that that's, you know, if you don't know how to do it, I guarantee someone who does and they hopefully are willing to help. You know, as I'm listening to you, you're following up on clients, like reaching out to them and making sure they're cool with your work. But you also said some things to me in the interview about how close you stay to your numbers. Like you're really on your numbers from posting stuff in your locker to checking something daily. And, and a lot of people don't get that. So in a nutshell, what, how, how do you do that? Well, so, I mean, are all Summit Salons, they're pretty much the same, right? Yes. Okay. For me right now, I'm trying to hit, 
I'm a 4A, but I want to be a double A. So I want to shoot for the number, the level ahead of me. That's always my goal. And I literally will divide it by the amount of days, right? Oh, so that number is divided by the days I'm going to work. Now, let's say the first day I hit my numbers, but I go over a couple hundred dollars. That means my next day's goals are going to change. And let's say the next day I'm a little bit under. That means even now the next goal is going to change. So just have the number I would fall a little bit behind. It is important to readjust your number by what's actually hitting every single day. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, and I want to make sure what you said was so profound I want to make sure that the, the people watch and get it. So let me give you back what I heard you say. That it's one thing to, you know, set your, whether it's monthly goal, weekly goal, daily goal, you're shooting for level, you're checking your numbers every day because they can change depending on what you did the day before. So you'll, you're always sitting down and reassessing, saying, okay, well, I might be a little bit ahead here. I need to focus on this today. So... You know, planning sounds like it's a very, daily planning is a very, very big part of your chairside manner. Yes, 100%. And to me, I always emphasize totally on the dollar amount because I know, like, usually I'm giving a quality service where I don't totally have to plan out every service of the day, but knowing generally, like, okay, I need to have four colors on my book every day to hit these numbers, and I need three haircuts. So, Yes, I plan accordingly, but some, like what you said, sometimes it's not always perfect. Someone cancels or, you know, they wanted a, they were booked for a color and cup, but today they don't want color, you know? I'm, I'm what? Yeah, I'm, I'm loving this conversation, Maddie, because it's very, very real. I mean, you're, you're basically saying if you really want to make, you know, just a great living and you're, you're trending to do $125,000 on a W-2, you know, this year, and the fact of the matter is, 95% of people in the business will go to a 30-year career and not even have one half of that, and you're hitting it on your, you're now, you know, about to finish your second year, but you're saying, look, you got to be on your game, like, you got to be planning, you got to stay close to the numbers, you got to stay close to the coach, and to the degree that you're focused, it's almost like the numbers are automatic. You just, you know, from following up on your guests to make sure they're cool with what you did. All of this is what really makes Maddie, Maddie, and getting her to where she needs to go. Yeah. I think, too, like a little trick that I do, um, if I'm ever, like, over on a day, I, can, I never roll that money over. So I always still stick to that higher number, and that always all the time and makes me end up on top. So that's like my little secret. So like if I go over five days in a row, I, I don't count that money that I went over my goal. Like, yes, I counted it's my money, but it just sets me up for more success as the month goes on. Because then now I pick my number 10 days over. Instead of adjusting that number to be less the next day, do you know what I'm saying? I always keep it for that higher number. So whatever the day was before. And that helps me... I mean, there are some times when I level jumped and my last month counted as my first as the next month. So, like, who, ta who, who taught you to do this? Because you don't learn that in beauty school. And as I'm listening to you, I would say you've really evolved that skill. I mean, that's some pretty sophisticated tracking daily and planning that you're doing. Like, who, who turned you on to that? Honestly, like, what? I started to learn some it and understand like it's really my own business. It was just something that I like came up with because I was like, if I don't count that extra money, it's really I can just tag it on and it's kind of like I, I paid myself a bonus for the month. So honestly, I think once I just started understanding like how to make money and how to do it the right way, not overwork, it kind of just like clicked in my head one day. Like you know what, I'm not going to roll that money over. And I'm just going to try to keep hitting that high number and not, you know, lower my value every day. Because really, that's kind of what it felt like to me. Like, when I was lowering that price, I was like, really lowering my value for the day when the day before I made so much more, you know? That's really cool. I mean, it's almost like when I, t when I, when I talk to sp some people like you and I go, how did you get so good at... Uh, 
photography? Did you go to a class? And I went, no, I just kept taking pictures and learning and learning and learning and now I'm to this place and I'm saying to you, how'd you get so damn good at planning and, and adjusting daily and hitting the target? And you said, I didn't, I just kept doing it and learning from my own process and now I'm at a place where I really can make all this happen with much greater intentionality. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I taught like three three of the stylists here asked me like, oh my God, I want to level jump. What are you doing? And I taught them my secret and those next three months, they all level jump. See, I mean, that, now that's cool because now you're, you're passing it on and I know that when I talked to you yesterday and I said, what's next, what's next for Maddie? You said, I, I want to start you know, paying forward to people that work around me and associates what I'm learning because to those people that are ready and willing, you you now have blazed that trail for them and that's what's empowering them to almost be like uh, your prodigies. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think back to when I was an associate and my mentor was amazing and there was never anything I couldn't ask her and that's just something I always thought I wanted to be in return. I, I want to be a positive teacher. You know, if you want to be a teacher, you have to know that your students are going to get better than you. And I hope for that. I tell my, my associate every day, I'm like, I hope you're better than me. I hope you are level four before you know it. And th that, to me, has more value in itself, knowing that I help somebody. You know, if I can inspire one person in my life, I'm going to be a pretty happy person. Well, I have a feeling that not only are you going to inspire a hell of a lot more than one or two, you already have. And I know that there's a, a whole bunch of people on right now that you're inspiring, and there's going to be a few thousand people that are going to be watching this conversation uh, in days to come. So we're out of time. I just wanted, on behalf of everybody watching, it was just an extraordinary conversation with you. I want to wish you the best of luck and ask you if I can have you back. I'd, I'd actually like to do a Facebook Live where I come in and actually do some shooting of you in motion so people can actually see you doing in real time what you're talking about tonight. Can I do that? Yeah, perfect. And, and thank you for creating Summit and helping us, you know, hit those dream numbers. I remember when I first was at beauty school, they were like, you'll never make 100000 I'm like, watch me. Well, yeah, and that, I think that's, that's the other thing we want to leave with viewers tonight is you have to not listen to a lot of the naysayers because they can't imagine getting to places that people like you are at. So uh, to them, I say, you know, listen to Maddie, watch what she's doing. She's a vision of what's possible. And if you really, really believe, you'll receive. So listen, we're out of time. We're going to give it up for you one more time. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. I thank you. See you soon. Bye. What an extraordinary interview tonight, my friends. It, um, she really has taken it to the next level. And, you know, you, you got it all. I mean, I think that uh, I, I've talked to few people in my life where she really follows up. I mean, she'll, she'll call or, or text somebody, you know, one day, two days from now on a, you know, a $150, $200 uh, balayage and make sure that they're cool with it. And how do you like it? And do you enjoy it? She's sitting down. She's, she's like a planner on steroids. She's looking at her numbers daily and pivoting and iterating accordingly so that she continues to push the envelope. And again, is that for everybody? Absolutely not. It's only for people that are really, really serious about making 100000 or $125,000 a year. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the show tonight. Um, I'm going to really, I want to, before I say goodbye, I, wanna, I really want to uh, tell you about next week who we're, who we're going to have on. Um, we're going to be featuring uh, Amanda Gilson from Coco Lay Hair, uh, Hair Boutique, Bel Air, Maryland. I think you're going to enjoy what uh, she has to share with you. For those of you that are new to us, you want to hang out on my Michael Cole OTT page, hang out on my Instagram page, Michael Cole BGTD. Um, because this is where we're blogging, this is where we're doing Facebook Lives. It's not, this has become a real live network where we're continuing to feed people. And um, the, tonight's recording will be uploaded on YouTube. 
If you're interested in that, just go to uh, you know Summit Salon Michael Cole on YouTube. You'll find them all. Or better yet, go to summitsalon.com, and if you hit a slash MC Live, you'll see all of my all of my YouTube's kind of curated for you. We also have um, uh, a product page on the dot com. Pick up the planner. Maddie uses the planner. This is the planner that she uses to kind of pivot daily. She uses the tracking app. She uses over-the-top books, so don't be shy about that as well. And so uh, I want to um, uh, thank, uh, these are our sponsors, uh, L'Oreal PPD Professional Product Division uh, from the Baxter, Karastas, Mazzani, uh, L'Oreal Professional, Redkin, Shoe, Matrix, SC, Purology, L'Oreal. I mean, it goes on. Thank you very much, as well uh, as Salon Centric and State Beauty and uh, RDA Promart, because these are the people that make it possible. And again, you heard Maddie tonight uh, talking about Summit Salon Business Center. I'm a part of that team, and we just continue to evolve. So if you're new to us and you're not sure what Summit is, talk to any of these sales consultants and say, hey, tell me more. I want to get involved in this conversation. I want to be plugged into this, into this community. So we're way over time. I'm going to say good night.